That brings us to item 3-9. Uh, and unless someone would like to speak first, uh, we have a number of speakers uh, on that item. Uh, and again, let me point out that the item on our agenda is here to initiate a discussion and preparation of a draft policy. We have no policy to discuss today. We have only a request that maybe we should draft a policy in this area. Uh, and uh, I point that out just so that the speakers who may not be familiar with our process understand uh, we do not have a specific policy before us. But we do have a request to uh, initiate the, the preparation of an ordinance uh, to regulate uh, reproduction of pit bulls and pit bull cross dogs. And so with that item uh, before us, we have a number of uh, speakers who have asked to speak. Uh, I'm going to ask that the speakers uh, uh, obviously are in, give us their three minutes. If they have three minutes, uh, obviously they may want to come back when we actually have a policy to discuss, uh, when that occurs, if this item passes and we actually produce a policy. But in the meantime, I would ask uh, uh, the first speaker, Katie Weider, to come forward to the microphone. And uh, is Aurora Chavez in the room? Second speaker, okay, you're in the front row. That'll be great. Be ready after our first speaker. So we'll start by hearing from uh, Katie Weider on item 3-9. Good morning, members of the Board of Supervisor and public. My name is Katie Weider. I reside in the city of Riverside, and I am a long-term volunteer for pet adoption and spay-neuter in both Riverside and San Bernardino counties. I came to, seek, uh, to speak in support of initiating an ordinance that would regulate the reproduction of pit bull and pit bull cross dogs. Um, I have served uh, the San Bernardino County Animal Care and Control through a helpline for 12 years. I um, have experienced the positive outcomes uh, since they implemented that ordinance. Um, I would like to say that it is well established based on the numbers in our local paper, but also nationally, that 20 to 30 percent of dogs that are impounded in our shelters are pit bull and pit mixes. I have personal experience in knowing how very few of these animals will be issued an invitation to be adopted into a family. There are very few, very few pit bull rescues because placing these animals is very difficult for many reasons. This is a cycle that is tragic for the individual animals. It's tragic for animal control personnel. I personally know two people who were attacked last year, one in Harupa Valley, one in the city of Riverside, by large, powerful pit bulls that were at large. This is an enormous waste of our tax dollars, and it is time for us to take very positive action in respect for the animals and the human beings and us as taxpayers. And I will follow this and encourage you, uh, please, to take constructive action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Weider. Mr. Aurora Chavez, please step to the mic. And uh, behind um, Aurora, is there a Sarah Kin Kosinski? I believe it is. Sarah, are you here? If you'd come to the front of the room and be ready, please. Thank you. Uh, Aurora. Thank you. My name is Aurora Chavez. I live in Riverside, and I'm an animal lover. I, I love that. Uh, I would take that label on immediately. When I read this article on April 5th about mass sterilization of pit bulls as a safety measure, that was a red flag to me. You're genociding a whole breed of animal. And it's not the animal's fault. It's the owners that you need to go after. Do not, do not blame an uh, innocent, well, if it's a baby, pit bull is brought up to be trained a certain way. And it's being victimized here by saying that breed of, uh, the certain breed of animal is a vicious animal. It's trained to be a vicious animal if the owner wants it to be. Any sensationalization of any breed of animal gets under attack of the animal. They get abused, even if it's a, a positive. You've seen how many dumped of chihuahuas because of the movie of the chihuahuas have been dumped. Why don't you go after the owners? Why don't you go after being able to enforce coding for chipping of the dogs? 
of the in, in, in incorporated areas, chipping so that the dogs can ident have the, their identification with them. So mass sterilization, I do not really like that because you're, you're limiting that breed of dog that it's the owner's responsibility to take care of these dogs, to randomly let the dog loose is not advisable. Dogs should be trained, you should be supervised. And, and also too, why don't you go after the owner and then say, okay, and the abusers of those animals. Animal abuse has gone so high by the dumping of the animals. So, and if the dogs can't tell you that who their owners are, the chipping would. So I would go for chipping the dogs first before you do any sterilization. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next speaker is Sarah Cointh. Please, we do not uh, have a response. Uh, allow everyone to say their piece without uh, comment, please. Uh, Sarah's next, um, and then Michelle Randall. Michelle, are you here? Michelle Randall, I believe it is. Is Michelle here? Okay, if you have a seat in the front row. Thank you very much. I see you now. Okay. Sarah, you're Hello, up. my name is Sarah Kaczynski, and I currently run Change of Heart Pitbull Rescue, which is a local nonprofit. Um, we're dedicated to um, owner outreach in the area and providing resources um, for affordable costs. We recently held a low cost spay and neuter uh, clinic where we paid for the entire spay and neuter surgery, which was actually a cost of $135 per dog at a low cost clinic in Norco. Um, we had charged each person $25 for a cone and medication, and we had 20 owners come out in one day and have their dogs spayed and neutered from various areas of Riverside County. Um, I do believe in spay and neuter, but I think that a lot of the community cannot afford doing this. And ac according to the current ordinance at the moment, um, it's arguably um, part of the reason why we have a problem with people not spaying and neutering because if an animal control officer shows up at someone's home and the dog is unlicensed, they say, please license your dog or, you know, neuter it, it's going to be cheaper. It's $16 for a license. If the dog is not altered, it's $100. But the current or, uh, Riverside County um, spay and neuter fee for a pit bull is 85 so 16 plus 85 is 101, but the 85 doesn't include medication for the aftercare. It doesn't include the cone. It doesn't include the pain injection for the dog. So if you include all of the fees, it's actually $132, I believe, possibly a little bit more to alter the dog and then license versus if they were to license the dog unaltered at the moment, it would cost them $100, which is cheaper. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Providing low cost or free spay and neuter for pit bulls, I think that a lot of people would come forward and they would actually get the spay and neuter done without being forced. I do think the current ordinance needs to be rewritten, um, maybe focusing on all breeds and enforcing the current laws that we already have would be more beneficial than seeking out strictly just pit bull owners because everybody is part of the problem. Okay. That's it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, Michelle Randall is up, and uh, is uh, Michelle Chavez in the room, please? Michelle Chavez, please uh, make yourself known if you're here. I uh, don't see Michelle Chavez, so how about uh, Ricardo Ben Go 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 Ben Gochea? Ben, uh, Ricardo, are you here? If you'd please take a seat in the front row, you'll be next. And Michelle, go ahead. Good morning. My name is Michelle Randall. I live at 12401 Dawson Canyon Road. I recently talked to Animal Services about the dog I saw mauled by a pit bull at their vaccination clinic. They informed me that the dog had lived, been taken to the vet, and the pit bull owner was going to pay the vet bill. This trophy was earned by my Aussie Ruby in 1988. In 1999, she was attacked in my front yard by my neighbor's wandering pit bull. She lived through the attack. I brought her home from the emergency vet with 92 stitches and nine drains. Dr. Butchko did his best to conquer the resistant infections caused by the catheter and one of her drains. Excuse me. She lived almost two years before she died of her injuries. 
The pit bull's owner, a dentist, paid a grand total of $50 of her vet bills. Then rationalized that the fight must have been Ruby's fault because pit bulls won't fight unless they're trained to. And his dog was just the sweetest thing. Aussies have something in common with pit bulls. Both breeds are working dogs that have been genetically engineered by human selective breeding. Aussies are bred to herd. At five weeks of age, they will toddle around and try to bite your heels if you slide your feet. They herd everything. Sheep, horses, cattle, ducks, chicken, at my house, cats, kids. If they move, they herd it. If you think herding ability is not genetics, try to teach a pit bull, a basset, or a golden retriever to herd cattle. Pit bulls have been selectively bred for a different kind of work. I don't care if they're, sorry. I don't care if they're usually just the sweetest thing. At the genetic heart of them, they are what they've been bred to be. Pit bull owners recognize that and use them as status symbols. When I was a kid and families had daddies, we used to say, I'm gonna tell my dad, and the retort, of course, was, well, my dad's bigger than your dad. Now it's my pit bull's bigger than your pit bull. In my rural neighborhood, we have 16 residents and 10 pit bulls. A lot of pit bulls are now being crossed with Rottweilers, bigger and badder, and that's better, you know. Finally, two days after my discussion with animal services, I turned on the news to see a frail elderly woman who had walked down her street in Hesperia and been attacked by a pit bull. The announcer described her injuries as multiple deep puncture wounds and part of her breast ripped off. Michelle, I'm going to ask you for a closing sentence. Your time has elapsed. Okay. The attack was not the pit bull's fault. It was the dog owner's fault. The pit bull was only being a pit bull. Personally, I'm a strong proponent of spay and neuter, and I encourage you to support the proposal by animal services to control pit bull breeding. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo is next. Shirley Farlant, would you come to the front of the room? You'll be next. Good morning, Chairman, uh, Board of Supervisors. Uh, I'm Ricardo Bengosha. I'm a staff sergeant down in uh, Camp Pendleton, California. I'm a combat wounded Marine. Um, I also have uh, a pit bull that is a service animal, and I also train service animals, and also am a handler, and also a very active member in local kennel, kennel clubs. Um, I'm against the sterilization because of the fact that we actually dip into certain breed lines that are temperamented so that they can actually become service animals. As of right now, we have service animals from Bethesda, Maryland, Bamsey, Balboa, uh, Camp Pendleton, that are actually serviced to help combat wounded Marines, sailors, soldiers, and airmen. Uh, me, myself, you know, I would have mine here with me today, but I, I would not want to uh, stir a ruckus for any reason. Um, my wife is here with me. But I'm here just to say that these animals are not just you know, status quos or, you know, oh, there's, you know, put out there for vulgarness or any type of, um, as other people have said, you know, fighting, this and that. They're always put as a uh, stereotype. Uh, these animals are more than that. I mean, I have severe PTSD and I'm, you know, I'm working with that and I'm being retired because of that. That's something that I've spent my time in, in the Marine Corps doing, serving my country. But because of that, I do have a service animal that is there for me. And this service animal does everything that my wife would do there with, be there for me, and is my companion. Uh, that being said, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, these are not perfect animals. No, they're not. But you don't see any headlines of Dalmatians, German Shepherds, and Labradors. But when it comes to pit bull, you'll definitely see that. That is the stereotype that we do have. But I will say this, as a trainer and handler, I've seen many different breeds brought up to the table and I, you know, I see where it comes from. As of right now, I do oppose it, and you know, I hope y'all take a little deeper thought and put a little more research into it before passing sterilization law. Okay, get, excuse me, can I ask you a question, uh, yes, please? Yes, you, know, you you keep your your pit bulls, you keep them in, you know, in the yard or on leash. They're on, you don't have them running loose. So you're responsible. Yes, sir. But not only not only that, sir. Um, my son has uh, an ADHD problem, and he, he does have one as well. 
My son weighs about 60 pounds. Yeah. On top of that, his, his service animal is a pit bull terrier. It weighs 82 pounds. That animal would, you know, definitely yeah. overpower him if you wanted to. My animals do run free sometimes in my yard. But and when they come I mean, inside, in your yard, it's yes, fine. Sir. It's your yard. Yes, sir. And then whenever yeah. we do take them out, they associate with everybody. I've taken my, my animal to a children's hospital, the cancer ward, yeah. because I do have cancer. And at that point in time, I've done many trips to different hospitals, sir. Okay. And I've never had any problems. And, you know, I've had brought in a, a lot yeah. of attention to myself. But because of that, I'm, you know, trying to advocate for the, for the breeds. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for your service to our country. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Shirley uh, thank you, sir. is next. Mr. Robert Lee in the room, please. Would you please come to the front of the room, Mr. Lee, and have a seat, and we'll be next. Shirley Ferrant is next. Thank you for letting me speak. I think it's a good idea that their pit bulls are sterile. For example, me and some of my friends go out to nature's and sometimes, like last week, I was taking pictures of sidewalk so they can get the sidewalks repaired. And around 3rd and 7th, there are so many pit bulls that it is unbelievable. I've seen them out in their yard where there was no owner around anywhere. And luckily, my friend got a big stick and came after him, and then the owner came out of the house. There was no fence around the yard, nothing like that. So this is a serious issue, especially with seniors. And I really hope you do something about this pit bull problem, because it is a big problem. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Mr. Robert Lee is next. Is a, I have a Ricky, a Blue Bell Lane wind. Right here, yeah. Ricky's here? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're next. Mr. Lee. Uh, my name is Robert Lee. Um, I'm opposed to the uh, sterilization of the breed and pit bulls um, or the pit bull type breeds. There's a lot of different types of breeds that have been clumped in to the pit bull uh, name. And, you know, there is a background and lineage of fighting dogs, but there's been a a new direction a lot of uh, various breeders have taken the breed um, over the years in Riverside every probably every uh, couple months there's a, a big bully show over a hundred people lots of different dogs and uh, I'm not seeing you know people aren't getting attacked judges aren't being bitten I've personally traveled from uh, Washington Oregon Las Vegas California Texas uh, you know, all the way to the East Coast with my dogs, travel with my dogs to show my dogs and, um, you know, represent them in a positive way. Uh, and I've never had any issues w around them with my kids or other uh, human beings. Um, I think that if there's loose, loose dogs running around, we have to look at what the problem is as far as, you know, owners taking care of their dogs. And as someone said earlier, uh, making the uh, spay and neuter cost a little bit more, uh, or, or you know, more affordable for people. You would have more people um, doing it on their own will rather than being forced to. Because I think you know there is some good breeders out there that is taking their time to produce good animals, and it's not fair for the uh, the good law-abiding citizens who are producing good sound animals um, to be affected by uh, the mishaps of someone else who's not quite as responsible. Um, uh, you know, there's many other dogs that are aggressive. Um, if, it's, if it's pit bulls this time, it's, it's eventually going to be another breed. Uh, once, you know, once that one's banned, a new dog is going to come out. It's, it's really not the dogs. It's, it's kind of a bigger issue that we have to attack here in order to uh, get this uh, situated, I, I believe. And um, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I have to say about Thank that. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank Tavoli, you. I have a question, I believe. A question for you. Are you, a, are you a pit bull breeder? I'm an American bully breeder. Uh, it is a different breed, but because of the nature of the... Uh, it's, it covers quite the pit bull type range. dogs. My dogs would be clumped into this uh, 
realm of dogs when in reality they're they have an attitude more like a bulldog they have cropped ears so some people do associate that with a pit bull but um okay and and, and you show them you you actually ba travel around and show these you, this breed that you yes i i have a licensed kennel and lake, lake matthews were okay. licensed uh, hobby breeders and um, I do show quite often here in um, locally as well as the East Coast. I've been to Florida, up and down the, the pretty much all of the United States with my dogs. And you and mentioned something in your opening comments, and maybe I heard you wrong, which is not uncommon um, based on my hearing. Uh, did, did, did I hear you say something about there are pit bull fighters? Well... You know, when you look at the the origin of the breed, um, you know, pit fighting used to be legal. Uh, okay. And so uh, when it comes to people that say the dogs are, are fighters fighting dogs, that's that's kind of a long time ago. Um, okay. Obviously, there is still people out there, as we know, that fight the dogs. But when it comes to bloodlines and stuff like that and, and saying that uh, an entire grouping of dogs is uh, natural born killers. Yeah. I just don't think that's fair to say. Okay, all right, I appreciate your testimony. Thank, Thank you. you for your Thank comments. you. That's good. Uh, Ricky, please uh, state your name for the record. And uh, before you start, Brenda Knight. Brenda Knight, you're close, you're ready? Okay, thank you, Ricky, go ahead. Yeah, hello, my name is Ricky and I produce the Dollies and Doggies annual fundraising calendar. It features all breeds of rescue dogs and is designed to raise money for shelter, shelters and awareness for horrific homeless dogs. I have three rescue pit bulls of my own. It is estimated one out of 600 pit bulls will make it out of a shelter alive. That means 1,797 innocent pit bulls gave their lives for my three dogs to live their life behind bars, sleeping on concrete, waiting to be adopted one year later. It is time to protect the pit bulls from the public instead of protecting the public from the pit bulls. My pit bulls don't have a voice, but I do. And I am here to support mandatory spay and neuter project. Although I do not like the fact that it is breed specific, I do understand that this specific breed is the number one bred dog in the United States and ironically the hardest breed to find a home for. We need to be proactive and address the problem of overpopulation instead of being reactive to the symptom resulting in alarming euthanasia rates. Pit bulls are victims of their loyalty and eagerness to please their owners and it is crucial that only responsible people own pit bulls. Most responsible owners already spay and neuter their dogs. Therefore, mandatory sterilization will only target irresponsible owners who are either planning on fighting or breeding their dogs. There is no such thing as responsible breeding in this already saturated market. And anyone who truly loves pit bulls will spay and neuter before adding more. There is also no such thing as just one litter. One female and her offspring can create 67,000 more dogs. There is no way anyone can monitor that many dogs. This is the perfect opportunity to fund nonprofit spay and neuter clinics in Riverside County with the fine revenue. In conclusion, the less financial fortunate pit bull owners will be able to spay and neuter their dogs and the homeless population community will be diffused. I would like to challenge the board to acknowledge all breeds in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Brenda Knight is next, and if uh, is a, there a Willa Bagwell? Lilla Bagwell? Mm -hmm. Okay, be ready. Thank you. Brenda. Good morning, County Supervisors. My name is Brenda Knight. I am a city councilwoman from Beaumont. I am here because in the last six years, I have been the victim and been involved with two pit bull attacks. Very unusual. One, maybe it's like getting 
struck by lightning twice. The first one wasn't as bad as the second one. I'll talk, I'll speak more on that later when you come up with language, what you're going to do here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Having said that, this is something that I have studied extensively, and as I don't know if you know it, our city council has recently taken action to support uh, giving our officers more leeway in deeming vicious dogs vicious. Something that I don't see in the media that concerns me very much is pit bulls. They bite differently than other dogs. For example, they bite like a shark. They rip and tear and shred. That's why you see them in the news. Their bites are more vicious. And I, I think that, that 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 isn't out there. It's just if you can imagine the rip and tear. Another issue is that we had Bruna Seco the 76-year-old woman that was brutally attacked come to our city council meeting about a month ago when we were looking at this issue to tighten the rules. She could hardly walk. She was bandaged. She could hardly speak. And what she did was, I'm here to speak on her behalf also. She doesn't know I'm here, but she pleaded with us to do something. And I plead with you to do something. There is an issue here, and it needs to be taken care of responsibly, sensibly, which I'm sure you'll do. And I am a dog lover, but I know and I've seen firsthand this issue, and I appreciate the time, and I will be in touch with you later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman Knight, and I'm sure our animal control folks will be in touch with the city of Beaumont to learn from your experience as they move forward in developing a potential policy. Will uh, Bagwell please come to the mic and uh, one more time Michelle Chavez. Is Michelle here? Okay, you'll be next please. My name is Willa Bagwell. I'm the Executive Director of Animal Friends of the Valley. I sent all of you an email last week with some pretty gruesome pictures. I don't know if you received them in the email. That is the type of attack that we're seeing when the pitbulls attack. We have a shelter, as all shelters are, they're full of pit bulls that don't get adopted, and chihuahuas. I wish we could add chihuahuas to this because the chihuahuas sit in shelters as well. We're seeing more and more attacks. I think it's the responsible thing for you to have the pit bulls altered. Um, just because when they do attack, somebody else said it earlier, it's not a bite and release, it's ripping someone apart. Um, Many of these are people's pets. The picture I sent you of the 87-year-old woman, that was somebody's pet. Their grandchildren are all over these dogs. But when they got out, they shredded this woman. And that's what we see all the time. Last, last Friday, we had a woman ambulanced in Menifee after her, her two dogs atta attacked her. We deal with this all the time in animal control. And people have them as pets. I understand that, but they're not seeing the animal control side that we see when we're out in the field and the damage these dogs do and the way they affect people's lives. So I ask you to please support this ordinance. Thank you very much for your comments. I'm Michelle Chavez. Is there anyone else here to speak on this issue? It's the last uh, speaker as I have the cards here. Okay, Michelle. Hi, sorry about um, being okay. late. <laughs> um, I. I wanted to start off by saying our family has been promoting the breed positively for over 10 years now. I have been to so many meetings like this, and it's hard for me to even think about it. I know that there is a problem, sorry, but we need to enforce current laws and enforce licensing of all dogs. By banning the breed, you think you'll be able to solve a problem, but you end up doing a couple of things. You promote underground dogs. You promote people going and starting to hide their dog, which me leads to more loose dogs or just dumping. You also punish good owners. There are many great owners that do everything right and take care of their dogs. Um, you end up killing many good dogs, family dogs, because of law, and now it gets caught up in the new rules and regulations. I know that there's a problem, 
enforcement of laws, current laws first, should be what you guys concentrate on. I know that the staff is already overwhelmed. There should be more education needed to promote spay and neuter and good ownership. Education is the problem. We need more programs that have been proven to work in the communities by offering free, low-cost spay or neuter programs in these neighborhoods that we're seeing the dogs from. I said in the beginning that I've been around for years. I belong to many organizations, Amstaff Nationals, local Riverside San Bernardino Amstaff Club, Secretary, President, I'm on the National American Pitbull Terrier Association as a board member. I'm also president of the South Bay Dog Fanciers. This year, we're hosting the National Pitbull Terrier uh, Nationals here in Ontario. Um, I do promotion of the breeds at the booths in Yukonuba, Orange County Pet Shows, and AKC Shows. We've been showing dogs for a long time. You know, we have a Yukonuba Best of Breed winner, a Westminster Breed winner. And in closing, I would like to offer my help in any way that I can to help with the ordinance. Because I understand that there is a problem. But we also need to protect the people that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Good owners that are taking care of their dogs. I know that LA and San Bernardino, they had exemptions for show dogs, people who belong to breed clubs, who do stuff with their dogs. I think that's part of the problem. A lot of these dogs are penned up in backyards and they don't do anything. I know lots of people and we've been doing shows for years now. We bring people with their dogs, with their kids, and they're actually doing stuff. Thank you, Michelle. Could I ask you to one sentence to sum up? Um, I would also add temperament testing as an exemption and a case by case and do in enforce current laws. Thank you. Thank and you. I appreciate your comments and uh, all the comments and I'm sure that our animal control folks were listening carefully and will consider some of those. If you have a desire to, they'd be happy to hear from you directly uh, as they uh, prepare for a dis future discussion of potential ordinance. We have before us item 3-9 initiating that discussion. Uh, I'll move the item. Do we have a second? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like uh, I'd like uh, Robert Miller to come up and just you know just okay and just he, he's heard all these comments. I know he's he's got something in mind, and I'm going to see if it. You know, I think uh, many of these uh, questions have been answered uh, or answered in, in the proposal that, that he's brought forth. Please uh, let let folks know who you are. And good morning, members of the board. Robert Miller, Director of Animal Services. Um, what really has brought, up, brought this issue to this board is on January 17th, 2013, an 84-year-old woman was mauled by two pit bulls, two neighbor pit bulls. On January 21st, 2013, a 10-year-old boy was mauled by two pit bulls in Cherry Valley, the first one in Europa Valley. In San Jacinto, on February 12th, 2013, a 91-year-old woman was mauled by her own two pit bulls. Um, in Riverside, city of Riverside last year, last year, the year before, we had a gentleman, it was his own dog, he was the grandfather of a whelping uh, female pit that was, had whelped a litter, and the female pit ended up killing the grandfather that lived in this home. Um, I would venture to say that if I asked everybody in this audience to close their eyes and picture what a pit bull looks like, everybody would come up with roughly the same image. When you talk about a breed, and a lot of people spoke about the genetics and the influence on the breeding patterns of a breed, pit bulls were bred to be champions. They were bred to be champions in one type of work, fighting. They are overmuscular, their jaws are overdeveloped, you heard uh, the, the councilwoman speak about the way they attack, the way they bite. They are different. They are unique. And I tell people all the time, the best and the worst dogs that I know are pit bulls. I mean, when I think of my childhood, I think of uh, Petey from the Little Rascals running around. You know, with that one circle around the eye. Um, I have known wonderful pit bulls. And... I think the last speaker was a little mistaken. We are not asking to ban this breed. 
In fact, Senate Bill 861 prevents us from banning any breed in this county. What we are asking for is to put together some reasonable um, regulations to help enforce and to encourage people to do the right thing if they're going to own this breed. Right now, in this county, there are tens of thousands of pit bulls, unaltered pit bulls, intact pit bulls. Does this board know how many dog licenses are purchased and are currently active in this system? Roughly 120. Unfortunately, this department can't be there, can't be everywhere all the time. There's not enough staff, there's not enough manpower, and a lot of times our responses come after an incident has occurred. But I think that, and we will demonstrate in the, um, in the public hearing, that we have had great success with our secondary enforcement of our spay-neuter ordinance. Um, other jurisdictions claim great success with legislating the pit bulls. Once again, I agree. I think there should be some exemptions. I do know of uh, pit bulls being active as service dogs. It's certainly not our intention to eliminate the breed, to not allow for proper breeding, and to not allow service dogs uh, for wounded vets or others. So all those things, I think, will be considered when we bring this thing to public hearing. Okay. Um, but Good. does that answer that, Supervisor? Supervisor Thank you. had a question. No, I, no questions. Just want to make some comments. And mm -hmm. I'll second your, your motion, Supervisor uh, Beno or Chairman Benoit. Uh, I, uh, I, I asked uh, Mr. Miller to put this on the agenda after a tremendous amount of frustration uh, over the last couple of months, uh, the, the, the incidents that he mentioned, uh, starting with the elderly gentleman, well, there's many over the years, but starting with the elderly gentleman in Harupa in a wheelchair um, on his porch, uh, uh, attacked by a pit bull, family pit bull, uh, ultimately uh, died from the attacks. Um, and then followed by, uh, not too long thereafter, uh, an 84-year-old woman, again in Harupa, um, uh, simply walking outside her front gate uh, to pick up the mail, attacked by two stray pup, uh, neighbor, neighbor's pit bulls outside of their fence, broke out of their fence, neighbors, uh, attacked her, 84 years old, Thankfully, uh, she was able to uh, be rescued by another neighbor. Um, looking at a Press Enterprise article of a 19-month-old girl who wandered outside of her home in Norco, was attacked by her family pit bull. Fortunately, the babysitter was able to uh, uh, rescue her. There was, a, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but uh, I think a nine-year-old boy that you mentioned in Banning, somewhere in Capizan. Ten-year-old boy that was uh, uh, recently attacked, uh, and there are many, many others. I just read recently or heard recently where an infant was brutally killed by a pit bull. It wasn't here in our. I don't think it was even here in our state. Um, and and to the veteran, the marine that that is here with a service dog, thank you for your service. There's no doubt in my mind that you're responsible wherever you are, thank you for your service. There's no doubt in my mind that you're responsible and your dog is a responsible uh, and, and, and service, service dog, that you do everything you can to ensure that, that your dog is properly trained. But the unfortunate side is we have many uh, individuals out there in our communities that are not responsible for their dogs. In fact, some of them train their dogs to be mean and train them, their dogs to attack uh, uh, when, they, when, when need be uh, to protect their properties because, in fact, they're, uh, I hate to say this, but they're criminals that uh, train their dogs to be attackers. And so those are the ones we need to, to put this ordinance in place for and try to go after and uh, ensure that uh, we try to make them responsible. And it's unfortunate that we have to put a broad brush at this. And yes, we will have to find exemptions uh, for those that are responsible. And, uh, and, uh, and so I fully support this, Rob, and whatever, wherever we can find the proper exemptions, let's do what we can uh, to help them. I just want to mention to the board, but more specifically to the public, 
I will get a link up on the home page of our website so that we can start soliciting input from the public. Um, and the department is considering a review panel um, that may include some public participation in terms of, of uh, trying to decide who receives an exemption and who doesn't. So um, that information will also make sure it gets up on our website. So. Thank you. Supervisor Ashley? Yes, I'd like to comment. And I, uh, many years ago, uh, when when my, my, so when my sons was young, he brought home a, bull, a pit bull puppy, the cutest thing you ever saw. We raised the pit bull puppy with a cat. They were the best of friends. And this was the most uh, wonderful, loving animal you'll ever see. But man, this was a one, it grew into one big, strong dog. And uh, eventually uh, we you know, found somebody else, you know, one of the dog. We felt uncomfortable with it. I talked to my wife. Uh, last night about this and say she lived in fear, in absolute fear that this dog would get out and escape our, our fenced area because she was concerned of what it would do. And I, I think uh, this, this, is ba this is badly needed and we ought to address this. Supervisor Tevel, uh, Stone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Rob, um, you and I discussed this and you talked about the, um, the, the biting a force that a um, pit bull has in comparison to other dogs. Can you articulate that for the board? Yeah, the, the, uh, the pit bull, um, the genetics of a pit bull allow for the jaw muscles to be completely overdeveloped. So unlike a lot of breeds, um, when they, a pit bull bites onto something, they can hold on to it essentially until that animal's dead. Um, I've known pit bulls, and I'm sure many people in this audience have known pit bulls that can hang from a rope in a tree for, yeah. you know, half hour, hour with when no problem. When we had, did that and had a big log like that, you picked up like a toothpick and walked mm -hmm. around. I mean, it was so strong you couldn't believe it. Yeah, you cannot compare yeah. the biting. Plus, their, their jaw is very uh -huh. broad. You look at a German Shepherd, and a German Shepherd has a very long, elongated yeah. uh, muzzle. And so the pit bull can get a lot of force, much greater force, pounds per square inch of force, yeah. onto what it's biting versus... Um, a German Shepherd and some of the other types of breeds. And, and Rob, there's no question that uh, the stereotype of the pit bull is a very uh, potentially dangerous dog. A dog they, they breed them to, to fight, they breed them to be mean, they breed them to be watchdogs. Um, but I'm sure that your department gets complaints about other breeds, Rottweilers, Doberman, Pinschers. Uh, do we not get uh, reports of, of dog bites, uh, dogs that are not on leashes that pose similar lethal problems for us? Yeah. Um, you know, when I was growing up, Dobermans were the killer dogs out there. In the 90s, the Rottweilers were a problem. Um, and unfortunately, I think the problem exists when the population gets out of control. When they're very popular or there's an over-demand, and right now, 20%, one out of five of every dogs that we impound in our facilities is a pit bull or a pit bull mix. And that's not just Riverside County. That statistic is true statewide. And so, um, yes, we get other complaints, and we deal with other powerhouse breed dogs is what we call them. Um, but unfortunately, I would say the worst damage is done by a pit bull, and the propensity of seeing a pit bull attack is much greater because there's a much greater population of them in our community. Uh, what are the... Uh penal codes, is there a penal code for someone that um, aggressively trains their pit bull to be uh, vicious and to fight? And if that pit bull attacks someone, are there penalties, criminal penalties that can be brought upon the owner of that dog for the, the actions of that dog? Yes, some... there is. And I, I would never speak for the district attorney's office, but okay. if, a, if a pit bull is used as a weapon, to harm or inflict harm on an individual, it's considered assault with a so deadly it, weapon. It, it could be considered a weapon. And, you know, right. we, we've all heard the, uh, the slogan that uh, guns don't kill people, people kill mm -hmm. people. Well, you can train a pit bull to act as a gun, as a, as a vicious weapon, and uh, we've seen some very heinous examples of that uh, in our county. Um, it is going to be expensive, uh, and unfortunately, one of the speakers says, you know, you're, you're penalizing the, the lawful owners, and you're going to encourage an environment where 
there's going to be black market pit bulls uh, dumped in, in, into our communities. Uh, those are some of the sequelae of, of limiting the freedom of people's ability to, to breed dogs for lawful uh, purposes. So as you, as, you, as you bring this back, um, I want to make sure that we have an, an appropriate uh, uh, exemption, if you will, for, for lawful abiding citizens, those who are breeding for show, uh, and where we can enhance penalties for irresponsible dog owners that purposefully train these dogs to be vicious attacking dogs that are designed to cause bodily injury either to another dog or if they get innocently released from their properties to hurt an individual, that we need to enhance whatever criminal um, citations that we can. And I know we're limited as far as uh, county laws to impose misdemeanors. It's the state legislature that can do felonies, but you pretty much covered the fact that they can claim it as uh, an assault weapon in, in some way, mm -hmm. and felonies can be uh, applied. And we would certainly encourage the district attorney to follow through and make some examples out of situations so that we make our our dog owners more responsible, because it really comes down to personal responsibility, just like anything else in, in our lives, that we have to take personal responsibility for you know, items in our homes that are dangerous, including dogs, including weapons, and um, we want to make sure that uh, we don't hurt the, the legal law-abiding citizens that, that raise these, and as Supervisor Ash said, they can be raised to be loving animals, um, but we see more often than not that uh, they're, they're stereotypically used uh, as, as attack dogs, and we have an overpopulation of them in the county, which further exacerbates the problem, especially with the budget shortfalls that your office has had to in, in endure. So, and certainly the licensing issue, 123 license out of how many pit bulls that we have in this not county is, is, is not good. So not we, we got to figure that one out as well. And I, and I also support looking for having stiffer penalties. Um, and I also think uh, multiple offenders, you know, second, third time offenders need to be addressed in a different manner. So we'll be taking a look at, at thank that you. as well. Uh, Supervisor Tavaloni, uh, uh, thank you for clarifying who brought this item for us. Uh, I think Rob wanted to make that clear too, but <laughs> I know Rob very well. Um, we meet on a regular basis. Uh, I, I sit uh, uh, on the uh, board of our, our animal shelter in the Coachella Valley. Uh, I know him to be a, a passionate animal lover, and, uh, and, uh, and we've had many discussions uh, in general about how we care for our animals in the county. Uh, I know that as he develops this process and the discussions we've had, uh, he is aware of the need for appropriate exemptions, uh, also for some type of due process for breed classification that someone wants to challenge these appeal things process that, right. that uh, I expect right. will be in that uh, mm -hmm. policy when it's brought forward. But month after month after month, uh, he makes reports to us about the number of animals that come into our shelter, and gracefully, thankfully, the vast majority are adopted out uh, and, and leaves... Uh, on too many animals that have to be euthanized, but, but the vast majority do get adopted out. Unfortunately, well over half of the animals that have to be euthanized and the animals that are in every shelter are pit bulls because they are just not readily adopted out. Uh, so we are putting a lot of pit bulls uh, to euthanasia every month in this county. That's a major concern for me. Uh, and, and if this helps us to avoid having to do that, uh, and uh, still allows for lawful breeders and appropriate uh, handlers and so forth. I believe it's a policy that we need to seriously consider adopting. I, I see Supervisor Jeffries has another comment before we vote. Just, just real quickly, Supervisor Stone has covered a lot of it. To, you're going to have to craft this in a way that's going to be incredibly challenging. You, you know, one, one hand, we are using the power of government to intrude into the private property and homes of what could be very law-abiding, respectful, well-trained, you know, pet owners that that uh, utilize their pets, keep their pets in a manner that is above and beyond um, what we may otherwise expect. And we have to be careful about using the power of government for that. Having said that, I support the exemptions for those who can demonstrate to your folks that uh, they are they are the type that should be exempted for professional reasons, show reasons, breed, whatever it is. Um, even, even occasionally, uh, I, would, I would support uh, just the individual who can demonstrate that they have the property and the whereabouts and the training to keep a dog just because it's going to be their personal dog. 
um, that's a little bit more difficult to achieve. One part that you left out that is so crucial for success, the cities are not going to be a part of this. So half of Riverside County or more will not be covered by this. Uh, it's, a, it's an immediate setup for failure. Um, in my community of Lakeland Village Unincorporated, I only have to drive two miles and I'm in either Wildemar or Lake Elsinore. Um, a pet owner can simply do that. The minute we adopt this, they just pick up, they go rent someplace else, and we've completely lost the purpose of this. All these victims that were identified, uh, I think 90% of them were in cities, so we will have done nothing to help them. Your stakeholder group needs to not be your staff and more, I hate to say this, bureaucrats. You need city council members, you need city managers, you need those folks involved in designing this so that they have immediate buy-in to propose it to their cities. And that's when we can have success with a reasonable ordinance that uh, everybody can live with. So please work on that. Yeah, Supervisor, I, I completely agree with you. I've had conversations with the city of Riverside and they are waiting anxiously to see what happens on the county side. Um, we have two great forums. One is the Animal Commission, which uh, Supervisor Benoit sits on, that has uh, currently the county and seven partner cities, uh, potentially eight soon. And then we also have the Joint Powers Authority for the Southwest, which I believe you, Supervisor, as well as Supervisor Stone, um, sit on, that we can also bring to other partner <laughs> cities. So we have some great forums, and I completely agree with you, interacting with these city councils and staff um, on the on the front end, front loading all of that is really critical to the to the ordinance. So, I appreciate that. Thank you, Supervisor Tavaloni. So, so Rob, the the cities that we can or the contract with us will have to adopt their own specific uh, separate or ordinance. Right. Once we they do. We have to prepare a model ordinance for them for their use. Yeah. Yeah. Our our last spay neuter ordinance was adopted by um, several jurisdictions after we had it passed, um, but there are a number of cities that have held out, and so. We really need to do a better job um, as we move this one forward to get a lot of buy-in countywide. Um, I think it's critical. How long have you been here now with us, Rob? Eight years. Okay. So you were you, none of none of the other my colleagues were here when we when we put forth the uh, fighting rooster ordinance. Um, so <laughs> this isn't as bad as that. So um, it'll. Uh, We'll, this will come through smoother, I think. Uh, yeah. We'll be challenging, but we'll get through this. And, and we still find people that cockfight, and we'll still find people who <laughs> fight dogs. Um, yes, we will. It's part of what we do, but having good prosecution <laughs> is uh, critical to it. Big uh, front page story on cockfighting yeah. a day in the desert. You're yeah. probably aware of that. <laughs> Supervisor Ashley? Well, we should prepare a model ordinance. We've done things before, and then the cities uh, followed us, like the water efficiency. We did a water efficiency ordinance, and all the cities adopted it. And they're, you know, they're looking for leadership. It's up for us to lead. We're not going to you know, ask some uh, city out there that's you know, barely making it to, to come up with something. we got to come up with it. And then we're going to have to go sell it. And some of the cities, uh, there's some cities that are already ahead of us, you know, like the city of San Bernardino. That's you know, say, well, what are they doing better than us? Well, they're doing this better than us. And their county is. So uh, we have to look, look at that, you know, get a model ordinance, and then we're going to have to go educate the cities and give them a chance to adopt it. And they get... You get a few incidents in their cities, they'll, they'll be looking around for a solution, and here it'll be. When, when we craft ordinances, we don't look at L.A. as the model. I mean, L.A. created a primary enforcement, spay, neuter, and microchip ordinance, and um, we found that that would be very burdensome on our department. And so our secondary enforcement has been very effective. Um, we have at our shock clinics, at our facilities, the line goes around the building and out through the street. And a lot of those people are holding citations, fix-it fix tickets that they're correcting to come in compliance with the law. So I think there's other tools that, that we like to use. Um, mm -hmm. And we're not trying to, I, my, my chief veterinarian says it all the time, be the Gestapo kicking down doors. That's not our intention with this. But I think it's a multi-prong approach. Uh, you can only legislate so much. You can enforce so much, and then you're going to have so much that people are willing to do on their own because inherently they're responsible. So I think we need to look at all the tools that are available to us and bring forward a comprehensive plan to this board. And I couldn't tell you when I will have this ordinance ready, but I will try my best to get it.
Okay. I think it's more important we take the time to get it right than be in a hurry. But thank okay. you very much. Any other comments? We have a, a motion and a second uh, to begin the process of drafting an ordinance. Please vote. Hmm. Matter passes. Thank you very much.